I've shown Kismet quite a few times now. Uh, something else I wanted to show that's built into Dragon OS is Sparrow Wi-Fi. Uh, I came across this uh, project a while back. It mentions it's a next-gen GUI-based Wi-Fi and Bluetooth analyzer for Linux, but what caught my attention is the fact that uh, you can use uh, not only the wireless NIC card inside your laptop or external to monitor the actual Wi-Fi channels for you know, access points, clients, MAC addresses, so on and so forth. You can actually uh, overlay the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz spectrum uh, through the use of a, an UberTooth and a HackRF. So it, it can do quite a few things. Uh, I'll put the uh, description, or I'm sorry, the uh, link in the description here. But you can see, and sorry if the font's kind of small, I have a Dragon OS booted live on another laptop that has a, an internal Bluetooth and wireless card so I can demonstrate this. I also have a HackRF. Um, don't have an UberTooth yet, but uh, hopefully I will soon and I'll be able to fully uh, go through all the features of Sparrow Wi-Fi. Uh, but you can see uh, the screen here. Uh, also, uh, another thing that's unique is uh, the fact that you can install it on a Raspberry Pi and put it on, uh, for example, a small uh, drone uh, and use piggybacks off of its GPS uh, and feed this information back uh, to the Sparrow Wi-Fi server. So it can actually work as a server and a client. So everything's already pre-installed. So we'll just go ahead and um, we'll do a couple things here. Uh, I have a GPS puck, USB GPS puck uh, plugged in to the laptop as well. So um, part of Dragon OS, uh, I've put uh, GPSD in here. So if you have a look on a fresh install, you're going to see that the devices uh, area is blank. And what I have found is that uh, by putting in, uh, uh, let's see, and you should be able to check your dev folder and it'll be uh, TTY, I see it down here, the bottom TTY USB. So we'll put USB zero and then restart GPSD. So now we should have uh, GPS available to us as well. And we can check that with uh, XGPS. And I'm going to put this down here for a second. Uh, okay, so it does see it, but we don't have a, a fix yet. So um, we can see that it is uh, working. You would obviously have your Latin long down below. Okay, so what we want to do is change directory user source Sparrow Wi-Fi. can have a look around here. We see there's the Sparrow Wi-Fi agent, which you would run uh, on something external, and then that would feed back to the Sparrow Wi-Fi server. So if you do sudo python3 Sparrow Wi-Fi.py, and give it a second to... Uh, Again, have your uh, HackRF, and if you have an UberTooth, have that plugged in prior to starting this. Uh, it, it really just depends on uh, your uh, Bluetooth uh, card. If you want to just uh, do normal Bluetooth without uh, uh, the UberTooth, um, you can see mine, uh, the options are actually available. Uh, the spectrum, I don't have an Uber 2, so I'm just going to focus on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. And I would uh, check mark that. I have a, a normal uh, router um, 2.4 gigahertz antenna attached to the HackRF with an adapter due to the, uh, uh, the reverse RP, SMA, whatever it is. Uh, you, need, you typically need an adapter to get that to work. So now we can see the HackRF is essentially using um, the HackRF sweep to monitor the spectrum. And let me let's see how we can block some of this out. 
So, you know, obviously you would, you would be getting the MAC address SSID, uh, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna block that out. I can see my GPS is green. The local interface, which is the internal wireless card is seen. Uh, it also has an option to hunt where you can use uh, power settings and stuff to, if, if you were walking around with this on, on say a Raspberry Pi or flying it around, you could hunt for uh, 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 different uh, wireless access points. Um, but let's go ahead. So we're gonna scan. Okay, so I'm back. I had to cut a part out so that uh, the SSIDs and MAC addresses were not shown, but you can see that my internal card uh, is in fact a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz wireless NIC card. So it actually is scanning through 5 gigahertz and showing uh, the channel utilizations and the, uh, the SSIDs if you hover over it. Whereas on the left, you can see that the wireless um, NIC card information is being overlaid over the HackRF sweep. So that's gonna tell you additional information like what's uh, operating there as well as Wi-Fi, so you could determine, you know, if there's any interference or anything else that may be getting in the way of your Wi-Fi. So, uh, let's see. So we've got uh, we can do this. Uh, we've got this running. Now we want to take a look at doing Bluetooth discovery. So we're also using Bluetooth at the same time. And now this is. Uh, let's see. Well, we'll try it like this. So now we're scanning Bluetooth. And we can see it also is getting GPS, RISI values, um, MAC addresses would be over in this column here. You can export all this information very similar to Kismet into a file that uh, could pull up in uh, Google Maps so you could uh, visualize where all this uh, stuff is at on a map. Let's see what else we can show. Um, you can see this is uh, doing the telemetry. You select a network that you, uh, and we can see there's uh, additional information. If you were to be moving around, you could map this out. So uh, what I wanna do is, uh, Come back to this when I have the proper antenna for five gigahertz, as well as a uh, to put on the HackRF to focus on the five gigahertz side. Like you can see here, of course, I don't have a five gigahertz antenna on there, and then the UberTooth, which would be over here on the left. So we would simultaneously be using our GPS puck, HackRF, wireless NIC card, Bluetooth card, and uh, Uber tooth, I think is what I missed, but uh, you can see how we can use all that at the, simultaneously. Um, and then maybe I'll come back to this, uh, get it installed on a Raspberry Pi and have it uh, feeding uh, remotely back to this GUI that you would see here. So all the information would be um, uh, coming from the Raspberry Pi remotely. All right, and again, that's all built into a Dragon OS. Very simple to get up and running. Just make sure you have the right equipment and you can have this uh, up and running.